What you witness today is only the beginning, my friend. Hannibal's first triumph on Roman soil sealed his alliance with the tribes of northern Italy. In response, Rome recalled its second army from Sicily to reinforce the defenses of Publius Scipio. And your father owes his life to your bravery. And I'm glad to see my fellow consul looking in better health. The doctors assure me I'll make a full recovery. Excellent. It is my view. We should strike at Hannibal without any further delay. And not allow him to enjoy his lucky victory. <laughs> Lucky it was, Angus. They just came out of nowhere. They nearly trampled us down before we could even draw our swords. I'm surprised to hear you speak like this of the barbarian. We can learn a lot in a day, Sopranos. Before any further confrontations, I suggest we rest our armies for winter. Every hour this Carthaginian spends on Roman soil is an insult. We need action. Swift action before he finds his footing. Tomorrow, I march for Trebia. As consuls, Publius and Longus shared the highest political position in Rome. Each term of office lasted just one year. With time running out, Longus was desperate to fight. At Trebia, I offered battle before his army was prepared, and he took the bait. 25,000 of their finest soldiers were slaughtered. At Trasimene, they threw the might of the Roman army against me. Under cover of mist, we forced them into a lake and massacred 15,000 of them. Some even drowned themselves rather than face our sword. Before I was just a name, known only to a few, a shadow came out of the mountains. Now, the shadow I cast reached across the heart of Italy. One more decisive victory, and this war would be over. Hannibal's army was now within striking distance of Rome. For the first time in 50 years, a military dictator was appointed. The man they chose was Fabius Maximus. May I remind you all that Hannibal's army is 100 miles from Rome? Well, then we must fight them. Fight them until we destroy them. Or until we are destroyed. Are you questioning, sir, the honor and the courage of the people of Rome? These are the facts. Trebia cost us 20,000 lives. We lost a consul and 15,000 soldiers at Trasimene. We are losing. And if we continue along the path of direct confrontation, Rome will be destroyed. No! Now is the time to be ruthless. And not just with our enemy but with ourselves, to face our failures, to reconsider our strategy. What is your proposal, Fabius? That we starve him of the one thing he thrives on, battle. The best way to fight Hannibal is not to fight him at all. 
Oh, he has a large army. But it is made up of many peoples who can be easily divided by harassment of their supply lines, by starvation of his troops. In short, to kick his army in the stomach. These are the tactics of cowards, not soldiers. Would you have the great Roman army adopt the tactics of the savage? I would have the great Roman army do anything to defeat this Hannibal once and for all. On the journey south, illness had eaten into me in a way that no enemy could. Do they really think they can outfight us this way? They know. A hungry army is a weak army. We have to find a way to draw them in for an attack. Where's the damn healer? He's on his way, my brother. We don't need a battlefield to defeat these Romans. I want their houses burned to the ground, their crops, their fields, everything that makes the Roman feel safe. I want it reduced to ash. Except Fabius. I want his property to remain untouched. Then let's see how secure he feels once those around him start to lose everything. So, Fabius, how would you say your strategy is progressing? He is trying to provoke you. Don't let him. It's not your land going up in smoke. The infection is very deep. Can anything be done? I'm sorry. Then leave me. Get out. Will I lose it? Yes. I am sorry. They may take it as an ill omen. It's not an ill omen. Of course not. Do you understand what it means to be a citizen of Rome, Scipio? It means whoever you are, wherever you go, people know that if you're attacked or mistreated, the whole might of Rome can be brought to bear in your defense. It is a unique privilege. I understand. This barbarian sets an example to every other half-breed and savage that Rome is to be trifled with. I speak out of turn. You're loyal to Fabius. Fabius is my commanding officer. Whoever held that rank would command my loyalty. Fabius humiliates Rome. My friend lacks your discipline, Scipio. Please forgive his outburst. He does perhaps raise an interesting point, though. But feel free to speak plainly, Scipio. You're among friends here. Yeah? Our present tactics make us look weak to our friends and allies. Hannibal is laughing at us. This is not the way Rome should conduct itself. So, if circumstances were somehow to change, you would be in favor of engaging the barbarians? I would under the right leadership. Well, my friend, perhaps the way of Fabius will not be the way of Rome for much longer. Fabius' dictatorship is coming to an end. I myself am standing for consul. And then perhaps we shall find another way of dealing with our problem. Within six months, Varro's ambition was realized and he was elected as consul.